Good morning. At this time, we would like to open our services. First of all, we want to all welcome you that are out there in our online services. We pray that you would go along with us and join in with us. We miss you not being here today, and we hope to encourage you to be back out as soon as possible. With that, we're going to open up our services this morning with a scripture. We're going to go from Psalms, 100, 103rd Psalms. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. For who forgives all our iniquities, who heals our diseases, who crowns us, who crowns you with steadfast love and mercy, who satisfies you with good so that your youth is renewed like the angels. The Lord worked righteousness and justice for all who are oppressed. He made known his ways to Moses, his acts to the people of Israel. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger mm -hmm. and abound in steadfast love. He will not always chide, nor will he keep his anger forever. He does not heal, deal with us according to our sins, nor repay us according to our iniquities. For his high is in the heavens above the earth. So great is his steadfast love toward us, toward those who fear him, excuse me. As far as the east is from the west, and as a father knows compassion to his children, so the Lord shows compassion to those who fear him. Amen. For he knows our frame, and he remembers that we are dust. May God add a blessing to the reading and the hearing of his word. Amen. Amen. When on the cross of Calvary the Lord was crucified, the mob stood round about him and mocked him till he died. Two thieves were nailed beside him to share the agony. But one of them cried out to him, O oh Lord, remember me. Oh, what a shame to kill him. There on that rugged cross, but such a death was needed to rescue all the laws. His blood was made a ransom to set the captives free. I know that I'm included. He will remember me. Oh, will the Lord remember me? have crossed death's chilly sea, will he his love there show? Oh yes, oh yes, he heard my feeble cry from bond, did set me free. And when I reached the pearly gates, he Remember me at his dear feet. I'm kneeling, my sins I now confess. How, how in deep compassion my soul he'll surely bless. My blinded eyes he's open so that the light I see and when I reach the pearly gates he will remember me. 
Well, will the Lord remember me when I am called to go? When I have crossed death's chilly sea, will he his love there show? Oh, yes. Oh, yes, he heard my feeble cry from God, did set me free. And when I reach those pearly gates, he I'll say amen. Amen. Will the Lord remember you when he reached those tired gates? Hallelujah. If you've accepted him as your true and lawful Savior and given all grace and honor to his name, he will remember you. He will remember you like he remembered you during this past journey in life. He's brought you not part of the way, but the Lord has brought you all the way. Amen. And we need to be grateful to the Lord and let him know that we know he is who he is. He is the one and only true and living Savior with all power in his hand. Yes, sir. You know, sometimes we get up and we want to think that he allows us to get to live because of who we are and what we've done. Mm -hmm. I got news for you. Hmm. If you just stop and take charge of yourself and look at yourself, mm -hmm. there's been a many times that if not the Lord had not been with us, and the mm. Lord had not been for us, we would not be here today. You know, you're driving down the freeways and you see an accident happen and you say, but by the grace of God, mm -hmm. it could have been you. Man. But he lived on high and he let his son pay the ultimate price mm -hmm. that we might all, not some, but all have a right to the tree of life. Man. But we should continue to always give God the honor and the grace that he so yes, deserves. Sir. Yes, sir. We're going to go to the Lord in prayer this morning, and I Hallelujah. want you to go with me. Heavenly Father, as we come at this hour, yes. we come to the Lord realizing that you have brought us through another week's journey. Mm -hmm. Not because we've been so good. Well. Not because we kept all your commandments. But Lord, you have a purpose for us being here. Mm -hmm. And we just pray, Lord, that you will open our hearts and open our minds that we might receive you, that you might allow us to know what that purpose might be. Yes. Lord, we pray that you will allow us to live a life so someone might look at us and say, I want to be like him or her. Mm -hmm. We can only do that, Lord, if we have you within our hearts and within our souls. We are not to judge, Heavenly Father, but to pray for one another. We thank you, Lord. Thank we you, thank Lord. you for each and every day. Thank you. We thank you, Heavenly Father, and we pray for those that are lying in hospital beds this morning. Yeah. Those are in hospice, hospice facilities. Mm -hmm. Those that are on a foreign soil fighting for what they believe to be right. Oh, yeah. Oh, Heavenly Father, if it's your will, we pray that you would grant us some semblance of peace, Heavenly Father. Please, sir. We realize that you have all power in your hand, Lord. Yes. And you will defend, Heavenly Father. We just pray that you would give mm -hmm. us a mind that we can understand what your will might be and accept your will, whatever it might be. Oh, yeah. For nothing happens, Lord, we realize on the face of this earth that you do not allow to happen. But give us the mind to say that we accept your will, Lord, yeah. and we will always serve you, Heavenly Father, that one day, that one day, that we will wake up and see whatever your will might be. Mm -hmm. Oh, Lord, we just pray for each and every one. If I had a million tongues, I couldn't call the names of all of those that stand in the need of prayer. My for Lord. we all stand in the need of your love, forgiveness, oh, yeah. and understanding, yes, Master. Lord. We just pray that you would be with us. Join us over here at Park Avenue, Heavenly Father, that as we stream, Heavenly Father, that we can reach some sinner, man, woman, boy, or girl's heart, that they might come seeking what they might do to have everlasting life. Yes. Look upon the minister that you placed over this flock, Lord. Continue to be with him and lift him up, Heavenly Father. Yes, Lord. As he lift up your, his flock, Heavenly Father, yes, that Lord. we might better understand your word. Help, Lord. Heavenly Father, give us that heart that we do not try one another, 
But we try to be there for one another. Yeah. We try to lift one another up. Yeah. Heavenly Father, each day we wake up in the morning, we have no guarantee that we're going to go to bed that night. Oh, but yeah. Heavenly Father, you're so good and you're so thank merciful. Thank you, Lord. We say thank you, Master. Thank you. Thank you, Lord, for just being with us. Oh, yes. Oh, thank Lord, you, Lord, we thank you for your son, Jesus Christ. Oh, yes. Who paid thank the you. ultimate price that we might all have a right to the table. Yes, yeah, yes. He did yes. what no other man could do. Oh, yes. He paid that price because Glory, he's your hallelujah. son. Thank but you, we realize, Lord. Heavenly Father, he sets with you on high right yes, now. Yes, yes. saying, Father, forgive them, oh, for yeah. I paid the price for them. Oh, we yeah. say, thank you, Master. Thank you. And we want you thank to be you, with Lord. us and continue with us throughout this day, Heavenly Father. Please, sir. Lead and guide us in the pathway that you would have us to go. Yes. We ask these blessings in Jesus' name. In Jesus' Amen. name. Amen. 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 The Lord remember me.
Announcements for Sunday, December 11th, 2022. Black Lives Matter Help Us are preparing our annual community outreach for the communities. Dates for the event will be Saturday, December 17th from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. and Sunday, December 18th from 1 p.m. to 4 p.m. If you know of anyone in need, please pass this information on. If you have a donation, would you please give it to either Barbara Dado, LaVon Hunter, Jerome Roy, Dara Lynn Gregory, or Sister Bessie Miller Gaylord. And today, if you have it today, please give it to them today, for today is the last day that these persons will be available. But if you do have an, a donation, you can please call for an appointment that someone will get to you by calling 951-742-5647 or 951-217-9292. And you can go to the church website page, announcement page for additional information. Thanking you in advance, Sister Bessie Miller Gaylord, CEO. Our weekly announcements on Sundays at 10 a.m. We have in-person adult Sunday school class. On Mondays at 10 a.m., prayer call, and the leader is Deacon John DeBose. Wednesdays, 11 a.m., Sunday school lesson and Bible study in person and live stream held in the sanctuary. On Fridays, 10 a.m. prayer call, and the leader is Deacon Major Carter. And the prayer call line is 1-605-475-4700, and the PIN code is 849592-pound or hashtag. All church announcements and requests for funerals, weddings, and special events, including those requests from the community, are to go through the church office first, which is then reviewed by Pastor Campbell for final approval. The announcements read can now be found on our church website announcement page. And the website is P-A-R-K-A-V-E mbc.org. In your prayer, please pray for the sick and shut in, those that are homebound, in hospital, in convalescent care, those that have special needs. Pray for our military personnel, our entire church family, Pastor Campbell and family, and those with unspoken prayer requests. And in bereavement, we, are, we have Sister Irene Rayford and family, and Reverend Robert Rayford's homegoing service will be Tuesday, December 20th, here at Park Avenue. Masks are required. The viewing will be from 10 to 11 a.m., and the service at 11 a.m. Interment will be Wednesday, December 21st at 11 a.m. at Rose Hills Memorial Park, and the address is 3888 Workman Mill Road in Whittier, California. Cards, condolescence, can be sent to the Rayford family home, and you can contact our church office for the mailing address. There will also be a public viewing for Reverend Rayford Robert Rayford on Monday, December 19th from 2 to 5 p.m. at Tillman Riverside Mortuary, and the address is 2874 10th Street here in Riverside. And we're also in bereavement with Brother Richard Dixon and the family, and the Summers family, and his services are pending at this time. Those are all the announcements that I have. Please govern yourselves accordingly.
morning, Park Avenue. It's prayer time. He still got those who have lost a loved one, who have, who have, who have lost a loved one, who have been down and out. Those, the, those are one who have been through peaks and valleys. And the prayer time. Eternal and most gracious and heavenly Father God, we come now, Master, with bow down heads and humble hearts. Father God, we know that you are able to do whatever you want to do in our lifetimes, Lord. Lord, before the foundation of the world, Lord, you knew about us. You knew what our life would be about, Heavenly Father. So, Heavenly Father God, we pray for those, Father God, who are sick and shed in, Lord Jesus. We pray for our world, Heavenly Father. Our world is in, in a bad shape. It's falling apart. We used to be called the United States. Now, now we are, we're half of the United States because so much is going on. The devil is everywhere. Heavenly Father, God, we need you now like we never needed you before. Oh, Heavenly Father, God, we come with humble hearts and bow down heads, Father God, because we know you know, Heavenly Father, God, you know, Father God, that without you, man can do anything. Father God, we need you, Father God. We need you because uh, the world is coming to bad state. Heavenly Father God, over the overseas and around the world, Heavenly Father, people are starving to death, Heavenly Father. The food is over there, Heavenly Father God, but the officials want it to be passed out. Heavenly Father, we need you now. Heavenly Father, bless everywhere over the land and country. Heavenly Father, look on those who are outdoors and hungry, Father God. Look on those who don't have any food to eat, Lord. Look on those, Father God, who don't know where their uh, next house is coming from. Heavenly Father God, we know, Father God, you're able to, able to do anything that you want to do. Heavenly Father, you know because you're God and you're God all by yourself. These blessings we ask you in Jesus' name. Every heart say amen. 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 And thank God. Thank you. 
great child was born. His parents loved him so. But when the time had come, they knew that he God let this child be born to save this world from sin. It was the greatest gift. God for the praise singers. Yeah. Brother playing the organ today. Thank you. You're here today. 
Amen. Praise the Lord for this Lord's Day morning. Beautiful rain. Thank God for the water. Only God makes water. You thought about that? Only God makes water. Amen. After the preaching, we'll have a couple to renew their vows. Amen. Sherry and Perry. Am I standing there if I can see you? Amen. 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 Married for 10 years now? Amen. Praise the Lord. All right. So after the morning worship, and you may stay if you care to, but you may have to leave. You may leave, but about five minutes after the benediction, we'll have the ceremony. Our scripture, John's Gospel, chapter 10, verses 27 through 30. Jesus and his sheep. My sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. I give them eternal life and they shall never perish and no one will snatch them out of my hand. My father who has given them to me is greater than all and no one is able to snatch them out of the father's hand. I and the Father are one. Jesus and his sheep. The metaphor, allegory of the sheep is well known in Hebrew and Jewish history. We recall David in Psalm 23, to the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. In several places in the scripture, Israel is known as the sheep of Yahweh. Psalms 40, verse 11. He shall feed his flock like a shepherd, shall gather the lambs with his arms and carry them in his bosom, and gently lead them that are with young. Jesus gives a reason <clears throat> why these Jews could not hear his words. It was winter time, the rainy season. And Jesus walked on Solomon's porch, the long walkway on the east side of the temple. Two months had elapsed since Jesus first had his confrontation with the Jewish leaders. Now he returns to the temple area at the time of the Feast of Dedication, also called the Feast of Lights. It is mentioned only here in the Bible in John 10:22. The feast is celebrated on the 25th day of the ninth month, yes. of the month of December. The feast of dedication celebrated the cleansing of the temple after it was desecrated by Antiochus Epiphanes, the Syrian leader. Judas Maccabees and his guerrilla warfare tactics in 165 BC had defeated a superior Syrian army and won freedom and independence for the Jewish nation for 120 years. Jesus' opponents asked him plainly to tell them if he was the Christ, the long promised Messiah. They long waited for the Messiah to come. Why keep us in suspense, they said. Tell us plainly if you are the Christ. And so they asked the question at the Feast of Tabernacles. The Lord declared himself to be, not use the word Christ. He would not use the word Christ or Messiah because of its political overtones. The people thought that when the Christ would come, he would cast off the Roman yoke and set the people free again. That would cause problems with the government. The Lord did not use the word Messiah or Christ at that time for that very reason. Remember, the people of Galilee wanted to make him the bread king. When he fed the multitude, the 5,000 people, not counting women and children, he fed them. They wanted to make him the king, the bread king. The Lord refused to be the bread king. 
He would not succumb to their trap. They wanted to trap him, to put him against the Roman government. But the Lord clearly knew their plans. He came to do the Father's will. He came all the way from heaven down, do what God the Father would have him do. He came to do his will. He came to fulfill the Lord's expectation and not the Jewish leadership. They wanted to come back like Judas Maccabees did and defeat the Romans, bring back the days of Moses and Joshua. The Lord will not do that. He came for a definite purpose. He came to do his father's will. He came to die on the cross for the sinner's sin. The Lord said, I told you already, and you believe me not. The problem was a lack of spiritual perception and faith. They were spiritually blind. They refused to believe what the Lord said. Believe that he was the Christ. He said, the reason why you don't believe, you're not my sheep. You don't belong to me. Not my sheep. So you don't believe. That was their problem. Impossible for them to believe because they did not belong to Jesus. There's always a problem when one lacks spiritual perception because they don't believe. Jesus points back to the allegory of a good shepherd. A shepherd in Palestine in that day had a personal relationship with the sheep. Jesus used the traits of a sheep to describe his followers. He says, my sheep, hear my voice. I know them and they follow me. Now Jesus said, my sheep, the sheep belong to me. Personal possession. Jesus had a personal relationship with his sheep. One who's saved has a personal relationship with the Savior, Jesus. This is what it really means to be saved, to know him as your Savior and have security in Christ. The three things the Lord says about his sheep. They hear his voice. Spiritual perception. The Greek word, a cool. Here means to hear. Is the present tense. It means to hear continually. To receive with the ear what has been announced in one's presence. It's to comprehend, to understand. It means just not just to hear, but to obey. When you hear, you obey. It means to obey the Lord's voice. It carries the idea of surrendering. Surrendering is the lifestyle of the child of God. We always surrender. Always surrendering. We find out we're going wrong, we surrender to what the Lord wants us to do. A lifetime of giving up your way for his way. Surrendering is what we do. Then the sheep are receptive to his voice. They know his voice. And they respond to his voice. When he calls, they hear. They come and do what the Lord says. They know their shepherd's voice. And believers know when the Lord is speaking. You know when God is speaking. You can't be fooled. You know when the Lord is speaking. You hear a voice of someone, that's not the Lord's voice. You can tell that by the way, because you're the Lord's sheep. They know his voice. You know when the Lord's is be, word is being declared. You know that. Yeah. It can't be easily fooled or deceived. You are sheep. They know his voice. They know his voice. And he calls them by name. The Lord knows your name. He knows where you are. He knows who you are. He knows you. He knows me. Like I don't know myself. He knows where you are. He knows what you need. He knows what you hurt. He knows the pain you feel. He knows your thoughts are far off. The Lord knows you and he knows me. He knows his sheep. 
And he knows what I need. Just when I need it. I think I know what I need. But I don't know what I need. The Lord knows what I need. He gives me what I need. He meets me on a personal level. Personal level. He knows each sheep. And sometimes the sheep need to be carried. They get weak. And Lord knows when you're weak. And when you're feeble. And when you're discouraged. And when your heart is broken. He knows where you are all the time. He comes to see about me just when I need him. For he knows where I am. And then he said, they follow me. They come behind me. The sheep are not driven. The Lord clears the way for a sheep by going before them. He removes all obstacles and dangers that could harm us. The Jewish shepherd did not employ dogs. Jewish shepherd had no dogs. A dog to the Jew was an unclean animal. They led their sheep, and the sheep followed them as they called their names. So, his sheep follow him. And we follow the Lord. How long have you been following the Lord? Think of the years you followed him and he led you as you followed him. Through all the dangers of your life and ups and downs, you followed the Lord. The days of sorrow and trouble, you followed him anyway. And he led you to the very point where you are today. They follow me. They hear my voice and they follow me. They come behind me. Not in front, but behind me. And Jesus says, but he gives his sheep eternal life. He gives them eternal life. It's his gift to his sheep is eternal life. Listen, you have eternal If you are a child of God, you have eternal life right, right now. The day you was born again, you had eternal life. This body would die and wear out, but you have life eternal. When the body lies in the dust of the ground, your soul will be in the Lord's presence. Turn a life with him. You have it right now. He gives it at conversion. It's God's gift. His son gives us the gift. Life eternal. And Jesus' high priestly prayer in John chapter 17, he said, this is eternal life. To know God and Jesus Christ, whom he has sent. To know God. And Jesus Christ is eternal life, to know him. And we know him. Personal contact with the Savior. We know him for ourselves. You don't know him personally. Your mama may know him, your papa may know him, but you don't know him yourself. Know him for your own Savior, know him in yourself. You're going to need him in a personal way, in your own life. You can't believe in someone else's religion or their how they feel about Christ, you got to know him for yourself. Personally, personal knowledge of the Savior. In the very moment, the sheep become a believer. They have the gift of eternal life. The very moment. So he gives eternal life. Eternal life is not just a life that does not end. Eternal life is quality life. Life lived on a higher plane. Life lived... And the synthetic relationship with God is abundant life. Not the stuff we possess on this life, the stuff we have, we're going to leave all this stuff. You leave your home, leave your cars, leave your wealth, leave everything here. You leave it all behind. There's no trailers going to the cemetery. We have life right now, eternal life right now, that will not die. We'll go into God's presence one day. His very presence. And enjoy eternal life. Like we will not be able to enjoy it now. The best is still yet to come. And Jesus promised. His sheep will never perish. Never perish. The Greek word here is a double negative. It's two no's together. It's ooh and may. 
They shall never know Paris. That's the Lord said. They shall never know Paris. Double negative. The Greeks used double negatives. The lost sheep would never be destroyed. They would never be lost. Never be abolished. Never. Never. He made it definite by using two negatives together. Right together. They shall never perish. No. And no man is able to snatch them out of my hand. No man, no one, no person, nobody, no one. No man, no system, no power, no government, no condition. No hiring shepherd. No thief, no devil, no Satan, no demons. No one. Plucked them out of my hand. The sheep belong to Jesus. And no one can pluck them out of his hand. Not at all. By no means can anyone do anything. Snatch his sheep, uh, pluck the sheep out of the Savior's hand. His hands speaks of his authority or his power. Our lives are hidden together with Christ. We are secure and safe in him. Believers are doubly secure. Jesus said, my father who's given them to me is greater than all, and no one can pluck them out of my father's hand. Double security. No one. No one can do it. Snatch them out of my father's hand. The sheep have double security. In God the Father, in God the Son. The Father, Jesus said, is omnipotent. He secures his flock by his power and protection. His power and protection. God's plan of salvation of a sheep cannot be aborted. When you're a sheep, you always will be a sheep. Never abort it, never stop being a sheep. The safety and security of the flock in the Father's hands, the Father in the Son. No one has power to snatch them out of the, the secured hands of God the Father and God the Son. The security of the believer is guaranteed by the person and work of God. He is true and just and will do what he has promised. God will do what he promised. We don't believe his promises. But he will do what he promised. We could trust him. We could trust no one else. We can't trust ourselves. We could trust him. I recall David. When you sinned against God. By numbering the people of Israel. God did not want David to take a census of the people. God wanted David to trust him. But David got beside himself. And God sent the prophet Gad to come to David. In 2 Samuel 24, 12, saying, The Lord presents three things to you, David. Happen you. Choose one of them. This God is going to chastise David for his disobedience. The prophet Gad said to David, The Lord says to you, Offer three things. Choose one. Three years of famine to come upon you in the land. Or three months before your enemies, while they chase you. Uh, three days of pestilence in the, in, the, in the land. Disease will come in the land for, for three days. And David said to Gad, I'm in a great strait. I'm in distress, not knowing what to choose. But David said, but let me fall into the hands of the Lord and not men. For the Lord is merciful. merciful. He's great, but let me not fall into the hands of men, for men would do me wrong. The Lord, I need the Lord to chastise me. I don't want you to whip me. Let the Lord whip me. For the Lord has mercy. He won't hold on me too long. He won't beat me too hard. He will have mercy on me. In the hands of God and mercy. I want God to whip me. Don't you whip me. You have no mercy on me. For the Lord whip me. He has mercy on me. And show me his grace and mercy. Let me fall into the hands of the Lord. You say, in God's hand is his mercy. His grace, joy, and security is in his hands. And Paul declared the Romans, who will separate us from the love of God? Nobody. Nothing. Nothing will separate us from God's love. He loves us. He loves us. He values us. 
and nothing was taken from his hands. We are secure in the hands of God. Some argue that the teaching on security of believer leads to lawlessness. That leads to living the life of sin. That's not true. The nature of the child of God will not allow him to remain in the, in the depraved condition. We won't allow him to stay there. Our new nature will not allow us to do what others do. We are sheep, and we remain the sheep. Christians are, like, are not like the pig nature. We have a sheep nature. Sheep and pigs. Pigs enjoy living in the mud. But a sheep does not. A sheep may fall in the mud, but it's against his nature to stay in the mud. He's a sheep. It's not his nature to stay in the mud. He falls in the mud. But he won't stay in there because he's a sheep. Pigs love it, but not sheep. It's not the sheep's nature to wallow in, in the mud. They fall, but they get up. The sheep are secure and kept by the power of God. Because they are secure and kept, they always seek to please God the Father. Seek to please the Father. We are saved by his grace. And so we seek to do his will. We do fall. We err. We get dirty, but we get up because we have a sheep nature, not a pig nature. We are God's children. You can't stay down there because you're a child of God. It means a lot to have the power from the inside. When you're born to God, it makes a difference. You're born to God, not just going to church, but born to God. Know him for your Savior. It makes a difference when you know him. Jesus said, last verse, I and the Father are one. What he says is, I and the Father, we are one. What he says? He said, I and the Father, we are one. He affirms his deity. Jesus Christ, he and the Father are one. One, the God the Father and God the Son. Two persons in the Trinity. Now the word does not appear in the Bible, Trinity. But the teaching is there. The Bible teaches the God, a Father who is God, a Son who is God, Holy Spirit who is God. One God but three persons. How you know that? Because God that made it known. He has revealed that in his word. I wouldn't know it if he hadn't said it. It don't make sense. No, it doesn't. But God has made it known. That's why we believe it. The Bible is God's revealed book. That's the man's... Reading is what God has made know himself, about himself. I am the Father. We two are one. Two persons. One God. Made known in scripture. He said, I am the Father. Are one. To say we belong together. Jesus' will is identical to God the Father's will. Regarding salvation. We are secure in him. We are sheep. We are secure because he's our shepherd and we are his sheep. In the hands of God is a safe place to be. I want to be in his hands. Secure in his hands where I want to be and where I am. He saved me by his grace and kept me by his mercy. I praise him, glorify him, the God who secures believers, sheep. We are sheep, and he's a shepherd. We belong to him. He keeps us. He keeps us. You can't keep yourself. He keeps us. Through the storm, through the wind, ups and downs of life, he keeps us. He holds on to us. We can't hold ourselves, but he holds us. He brings us through. Oh, what a great Savior we have in Christ our Lord, who came all the way from heaven down and died on Calvary's cross for our sin. But early Sunday morning, he rose from the dead, all power in his hand. He keeps us. He keeps us. We are sheep. And we belong to him. We belong to him. Aren't you glad you belong to him? I'm glad he came in loving kindness. 
to save my soul. Flying and on my way to hell, but he kept messing with me. He messed with you? He kept messing with me. Gave me no comfort, no joy. I, I got tired of doing what I was doing. He kept messing with me. I came to Jesus. As I was weary, wounded, and sad, I found in him a resting place. He has made me glad. I'm glad because he found me. My lost, depraved condition. And we belong to him. Believers belong to him. We are his sheep, and he's our shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. He is. The isness of God. Right now, he is our shepherd. We shall not want. All I need, he gives me. He gives me when I need something, he gives me some things I want. But all my needs are supplied by my shepherd. He takes care of me. Takes care of you too. You belong to him. Look back on your life. You ever do it sometime? See where the Lord has brought you from? All the stuff you've gone through, he's been right there with you. He's been your shepherd. And you a sheep. So praise God for being the Lord's shepherd. The Lord's sheep. Because he's our shepherd. We belong to him. We belong to him. He doesn't leave us to ourselves. He's right there with us. If you're here today, have not embraced the Savior, will die if you're on Calvary's cross. As we stand, if you're here, you may come. Doors open for you. We all need salvation. We have it through Jesus Christ our Lord. change the vows after the uh, benediction. You may say if, if, if you care to, if you have to leave, we understand. They'd be glad to have you come and stay for the ceremony, but if you have to leave, we understand that. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. Amen. Amen. Didn't our hearts burn within? Amen. Amen. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Amen. I read it in the book of Malachi. That God said, test me now. Yeah. And so open up the windows of heaven. And pour you out a blessing that you won't have room enough to receive. I heard Jesus, I read where Jesus says, give and it shall be given unto you. He said, in good measure, press down and shaking together shall men give unto their bosom. Paul said, if you give sparingly, you shall also reap sparingly. But if you give bountifully, you shall also reap bountifully. Every man according to his purpose in his heart. So let a man give, and not grudgingly of necessity, but God loves a cheerful giver. Amen. Let us pray. Father, 
we come now. We come in the precious, the most powerful name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our, and our Savior. We thank you, Father, for blessing us. You blessed us today with the word, Father. You blessed us with songs from on high. Now, God, we come back to give a portion of the blessing you gave us in our resources. We ask, God, that you will bless it and that you will multiply it as you see fit. We thank you, Father, for those who have already gave, Father, those that are given, Father, and those that had the heart to give. We thank you, Lord, and we pray that, 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 that everything we give is, is, we don't give it grudgingly, but we give it cheerfully. We ask for all our blessings in Jesus' name and for his sake. In the saints said, amen, amen, and amen. God bless you. Thank you. Now may your grace and mercy go with us. Go down from this place. Keep us in your care, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, we'll, if you have to leave, you may leave. We're going to have the ceremony in about the next five minutes. If you have to go, you have to go. Amen. No, you wish them will. Move this table for me, the Lord's Supper table. Yeah, he could do it. He could do it. Either role.